Germany is a great opponent and really tested us and pushed us. Um, but obviously we're delighted to be moving on and um, you know our focus will enjoy this tonight and then our focus will immediately turn to our, our next opponent and find out who that is tomorrow. The American women are one game away from being crowned world champions in soccer, or football, take your pick. Their victory over top-ranked Germany in the World Cup semis was called by many the title match, no matter who is on the other side of the final. And America rejoices, so we're told. Because no matter how you slice it, there are still millions who could care less because it's the women's team. Even though it's American, it's still just the women's team. This despite being told by the media and soccer aficionados that there is no difference and they should be just as excited. So stir it up. Let the sports professor opine from there. Welcome back to the man who invented the concept of sports business commentary and thus fears no subject. And he better not. Rick Harrow joins us on the show. Good to see you again, Professor. I'm in Atlanta. I'm about to call all the media outlets I know and have the females boycott you for that introduction. Well, now, wait a minute. See, now, that's the wrong attitude to take here because you know, and you and I have been together and we've known each other a long time, that I have always been in favor of women's athletics, specifically in college. I've always stood in favor of them. But you and I both know that despite the fact people are being told this is important and this is a great sport, most of America could care less. All right, would you take the fact that last night's game attracted five times as much as game six of last year's World Series. How about this? Would you take a 14 rating on television? Absolutely. Because that's what's going to happen on Sunday night, July 4th, pal. Absolutely. And that's my point, because there are people out here telling us that this is important, and it is important, but is this still... Every time there's one of these games, Rick, we're told that this is going to make women's soccer and or soccer more important in America, more people are going to watch it, and it will have lasting effects. It has had some effects, but is it really going to make that difference this time? All right, here's the bounce. So we get the 14 rating on Sunday night because we all like the idea of Americans kicking some butt on July 4th, no less, and responding with a mega event. Those are three things that Americans have liked since George Washington. The bottom line is next week, does Procter & Gamble and all of the sponsors that appeal to the 41% women avid sports fans open their wallets and say, now let's capitalize a major U.S. professional soccer league because we tried three times. By the way, we still have one right now, and you're right, nobody knows about it. But see, there it is, and I was just going to bring up the Women's Professional Soccer League because there's great interest when it's the United States against the world. People want to be there because it's a nationalistic pride issue. But it's fair to say that women, and even the men to some inference, if you go to Major League Soccer, it hasn't created this monstrous uh, franchise league that people wanted. for. So it's good. The men's side, but it's not a monster like the four major sports have been, yes? No, it's not a monster, but I was in Orlando last night for a uh, Orlando Lions FC game. It's an expansion franchise. They're building a hundred and some odd million dollar stadium. Their franchise fees are a hundred million dollars. It's not stupid. It's a legitimate investment. They were really intense last night. The, I, I, the, I guess I'm, I'm soccer excited today because I saw the division of the loyalties of people watching the scoreboard in Orlando last night plus the people going to the game yesterday. So is soccer going to replace hockey, whose now average franchise value is over $200 million, $300, $400 million in expansion price, price half a billion? No. But are they making strides? And are the franchise values now $100 million plus? Yes, and I think that's what we got to focus on. But do, we, do we say, though? Usual, yeah, go on. I was just going to gonna cut you before the holidays. We don't well, that's that. okay. I know you do that anyway. Do we say, then, that this is the number one American women's sport? Um, and not really. Uh, the LPGA would have some interesting debate on that. I, I think if they if they win uh, uh, tomorrow night, uh, s s Sunday night, let's give them the title of the number one uh, women's uh, sport uh, until the women's final four. And my friends. Uh in the women's movement and those in the NCAA and many others, they're the ones who know that I was the guy talking about them many years when people weren't talking about them all in college and in pros in South Florida. So let's just make that point, Mr. Haro. Uh, well, I, I agree with you, by the way. Uh, I, have, I will you. agree. Uh, very rare, but I will agree with you. There you go. Okay. I have one minute left. What do you think of the Detroit Lions hosting the LGBT Pride event this season? They would pretty much be the first Pride night of its kind in the NFL. Is this We're going to see this in all the franchises? First of all, we need more than a minute. Second of all, it's a great deal that all people in Detroit have pushed for, as we know. But it also ought to be the beginning of the next step. Uh, there are reasons to do it. There is the respect uh, for the movement. There's the fact that it's the right thing to do. And there's the fact that it's a gateway to significant sponsors and money. 
I don't care what the reason is. I do care that it's happening. It's a good thing. Really quick, though, do you think we'll see this at all the other franchises in the NFL within maybe a season or two? This will start the trend. Within a season or two, yes, maybe not all, but most. Okay. And uh, by the way, I just want to point out once again, pink is not your color. Uh, <laughs> you did that last week, man. So, all right, so here's the deal. You know, we have the hot dog eating contest yes. this week, sponsored by Pepto-Bismol. Next week, we're going to talk about how many hot dogs you ate on July 4th. Oh, okay? don't even go there, brother. Don't even go there. As long as you don't put ketchup on it, you're all right. Rick Carl, the sports okay. professor, always a pleasure, my friend. Take care. Sartorially uh, splendorous as well, if you will. Uh, coming up next right here, the Apple disaster. Well, think of how infrequently you hear those two words spoken in the same sentence, and this one just might actually be realistic this time. Coming up next on Midpoint.